everyone. Welcome to Word of Faith Family Church. Great to be in the house of the Lord tonight, Holy Ghost night. Have you come expecting? Yeah. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> I'm just going to open up this evening with uh, Psalms 95, 1, 2, 7. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us shout happily to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with songs of thanksgiving. Let us shout happily to him with songs. The Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth, and the mountain peaks are, at, are his. The sea is his, he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let's kneel in front of the Lord, our Maker, because he is our God, and we are the people in his care, the flock that he leads. We serve an awesome God tonight. He's great, he's awesome, he's mighty. And no matter what you're going to, God is greater, he's bigger, he's stronger, and he's here to meet your needs. So just enter in and receive everything he's got for you tonight. So you want to thank the Lord for our new church building? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for our new church building. Thank you, Lord. You've got this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father God, we just thank you tonight, God. We just thank you for this service. We thank you for your anointing on each person that you use tonight, God. Let their words be yours anointed with your power and your presence, God. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. Come and do and say what only you can do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 I'm just going to worship the Lord for a while tonight and see what he wants to do.
Father God. We just trust in you tonight, Father God, that you are the God of more than enough, Father God. You are the source of all things you are, Father God, and we just trust you tonight, Father God. You are so good, Father God. Thank you, Father God, that we are the head and not the tail, Father God. That we're blessed coming in and we're blessed coming out, Father God, because we trust in you, Father God. And we give what you told us to do. To do, Father God. We do what you tell us to do, Father God. And we're just so blessed tonight, Father God. We thank you, Father God. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. we have this ministry, so we realize God has given each of us a ministry, and we have received mercy, we faint not. Okay, we're going to go to verse 2. But I have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. We have to be very careful with the word of God. We don't twist it, we don't make it say something that it's not saying. Right. We handle it with, with the you know, honesty. Now, does that mean we know everything about the word? No. no. But to the best of our ability, now, there are people that take the word of God and they twist it. Mm -hmm. okay? Paul, uh, Peter talked about those that took Paul's words and said, yeah, yeah, they're hard to be understood, but those, there are people that take his word and they twist it, but they do it to their own destruction. So we want to be very, very careful about how we handle the word of God. I always pray, Lord, uh, help me to be accurate right. in the word of God. Accurate in the gifts, accurate in the word. Okay? Amen. Uh, nor handling of the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. We'll go to verse 3, please. But if our gospel be hid, good news, that gospel be hid, is hid to them that are lost. All right. Verse 4. And whom the God of this world, who is the God of this world? Satan. Satan is called the God of this world. When did that happen? Anybody know when he became the God of this world? When Adam fell. When Adam fell. Right. 
He said Adam was the god of this world. Mm -hmm. Eve. But when they sinned, they turned it over to Satan. Right. And in the, in the wilderness, when Jesus was being tempted of the devil, uh, the devil showed him all the kingdoms of God, uh, uh, the kings and the glory of God. And he said, all those things which have been given to me, if you fall down and worship me, I'll give them to you. Right. Well, Jesus wouldn't do that, because they're already his anyway. Yeah. Right. And whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. His, his goal is to blind people's minds from understanding the word of God and the truth. Right. Now Jesus spoke, I believe it, I'm, I could be wrong, it seems like it was in Matthew 23 something, 23, 23. He spoke to the lawyers. He said, woe unto you lawyers. You had the key of knowledge. You did not enter in and you hindered the ones that wanted to enter in. Right. Right. And so uh, Satan will blind people's eyes. They'll tell you, well that's not for today. No. Healing isn't for today. Being filled with the Holy Spirit isn't for today. You know, prosperity isn't for today. You know, they, they, they tell you these things. That's, what, that's his job. Mm -hmm. and whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not less the light mm -hmm. of the glorious gospel of Christ, <coughs> who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So God, God's word is, is light, and it wants to shine into our hearts. Right. Okay. Verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. All right. Verse 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined into our hearts. Hallelujah. Right. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. So God has commanded the light to shine in our hearts. To give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Now let's get to verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Albert, if we could go to that picture. Have you found it yet? It says we have this treasure. Say everybody say, I have a treasure. 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 But it's in an earthen vessel. Mm. Okay? Now what does it mean by an earthen vessel? Okay? And it's a it's a it's a vessel that's cracked. Okay? Uh, verse seven it says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessel. In other words, God chose to put us, put his Holy Spirit and his power and his glory into us. And we're just, we're just cracked vessels. Mm -hmm. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, you look like a crack pot. My brother Tony is. Well, no, sorry about me. <laughs> but when you, when you see a, a cracked pot like that, you realize, well, that, that's probably, you know, that's not very elegant. That's not very, you know, special. Okay? You know, but why, why would God choose to use something something like that? In, in, in spiritual realm, if you could, if we could see in the vision, that's you and me. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a little more of a slender. <laughs> uh, not to, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, it's cracked. It's, it has no, no value of its own. But it says that we have a treasure. Right. A treasure. Well, what's a treasure? When we think about it, sometimes I just like to meditate on things. A, a treasure. What is a treasure? A treasure is is Special. something that has some value, yeah. right? right? It's valuable. Could be a painting. You know, it, it could be. Uh, you know, we, we think of buried treasure. You know, with pirates. You know, they, I was up around the uh, uh, River de Loop here some time ago, and and there is some stories that. Uh, uh, one of the famous uh, pirates had buried some buried treasure up there. I don't know, uh, one of these really famous uh, uh, black beard or something like that supposedly has buried some treasure up there. Well, they'd be interested to find something like that. But what would happen if you found some buried treasure? What would probably happen if it was buried treasure? <coughs> it would probably make you what? Uh, Happy. Yeah, well. okay. That's what treasure does. 
when you realize that you have something of value. Now, if you don't realize that there's a treasure on the inside of you, you will have no value to it. When I went to, I went out to Mangum, Oklahoma, uh, to minister in my daughter and my son's son lost church, the Lord said, I want you to go out there into this Pentecostal church, and I want you to, to, to and, and show them the value of speaking in tongues. Because if they don't see, if, you, if people do not see the value in speaking in tongues, nobody's going to want it. Right. Is, nobody wants it. But there's a huge, huge value for you and I being filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, mm -hmm. All right. Because that's why Satan fights so hard to keep people from getting it. Yeah. In my day and age, uh, we were told that that was of the devil. I mean, that, you know, speaking of tongues, does anybody remember those days? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's the devil, that's just the devil, you know? Well, it was God, but it was the devil didn't want us to get it. Right. That's right. So there's a treasure. A treasure has been deposited into earthen vessels or cracked pots. Okay? And so God has chosen you and I, when you gave your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, Got born again, and I'm going to say spirit filled. All right, born again people don't have has have this treasure and value, but often, but if we don't know about it, we won't do anything about it. Right. Okay? Now let's go back to that scripture, Albert or, or uh, Maria. Thank you, Lord. But but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Now why do we have this treasure in earthen vessels? Why did God, you know, why did God, you know, we, he could have used some really fancy pottery, you know, something really elegant to pour it in and say, man, you're, you're elegant and everything. Because, you know what, he wants us to realize that, that we have lots of imperfections, a lot of shortcomings. None of us are perfect, okay? including you, Kim, nothing perfect. <laughs> so what? It says that, everybody say that. The excellency of the power of God may be of God and not of us. Right. That the power of God mm. would be of him. Because everybody knows you're a crackpot. <laughs> right. They already know that. Yeah. And then when God uses you, they, people go say, that had to be God. <laughs> that just had to be God. Because I know that person. Right. And they, they don't have that talent. They don't have that ability. They don't have that in them. And yet God used them. Because if, if, if we were so wonderful and so magnificent, the glory that people say, oh, look at that person. They're so glorious. Yes. And God's not going to share that kind of glory. No, no. It's for him. Okay? It's for him. I have seen the Lord use some of the most unusual people, you know, at, at different times. And you would think, well, I would, I would, I would never have chosen that person. I never would have chosen me. Be honest with you. I would have, you know, would have you chosen? Would you have chosen you to, to do, let the power of God be in? I, I never would have chosen me. I would have never chosen me to be a pastor. I never would have. But I didn't choose me. God chose me with all the cracks and flaws and shortcomings and. You know, with some, you know, sometimes you can get a pot that's got one of those little lace things cut off on the side. You know, we're all that way. In our, in, 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 if we could see ourselves, we, we all have these huge, huge flaws. Now, I know. We try to give the image that we're perfect. Where we just got it all together. I remember I got time for a story. Uh, I was in a, a service one time. It was a women's glow service. Uh, back in Oklahoma, and uh, I remember the, the guest speaker, he was ministering to some of the ladies, and, and this one lady came up, and, and uh, uh, she was she was dressed at, you know, like Brother Hagin said, to the night. In other words, she was, she was from top to, to bottom, she was dressed in the very best. Her hair was perfect, and she was dressed perfect. If you, anybody had their act together, it would be her, it was, you know, from appearances. And when she got up in front of this guy, this guy said, and he said, uh, you're, you got it all together on the outside. He said, by the inside, sister, you're a mess. <laughs> and the tears started to flow. Oh, yeah. See, you can, you can cover things up on the outside, right. but it's the inside of us. Mm -hmm. okay? And so uh, none of us are perfect. We all mm -hmm. have shortcomings. Right. 
And you could, you could, you know, you could just snoop around somebody's life. You'll, you'll find something about them, you know, something they said or something they've done yeah. that you, that, that maybe in our opinion would disqualify them. But God chose you. No. You know what? The world, the world would disqualify you. Yeah. God has qualified you. You ought to put that down, Miss Kim. Yeah. The world has disqualified you. But God has qualified you. You know, it, there's certain places, at least in the States, I'm here in Canada too, that evangelicals are considered terrorists. Yes, yes. They have been labeled a terrorist because of their, their uncompromising view on, on certain issues and we won't we won't bend for certain moral things anymore. And then we're God. not we're we're hindering. We've been told that the worst people in our I'm not going to mention the Prime Minister, that would not be right. But this Prime Minister, still in office, but he said that, you know, it's, it's the evangelicals that are the problem. They stand in the way of, of all the things going through. Right. So, yes, he did. Wow. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I, I didn't mention him. any names, so. Yeah, I, 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 I heard him say it. So we're, we, in certain political circles, we, we are considered the enemy. And so we are disqualified. Somebody said this, it was kind of, just why would you, why would you take the opinion, uh, or why would you even even put a, a Christian in politics that the rapture is going to come and they're going to leave anyway? You know, well, why would you bother to do that if they're not going to be here? But the world has disqualified us. But God has qualified. God has qualified us to do great things in his name. Amen. Nobody, you know, we have a tendency to put people on pedestals. Mm -hmm. We just do. We, you know, we, we put many men on a pedestal and everything. But I tell you what, he, he has to put his pants on like everybody else in the morning. Right. I mean, he's going to have bad gas sometimes, bad breath, <laughs> all these other things. You know. Here we go. It is true. <laughs> true. He's just, he's just human. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He's just human. And yet the power of God can flow through him. Smith Wigglesworth. Yeah. The power of God would flow through that man. And yet he had a daughter that was deaf. Mm -hmm. Go figure that one. Here's how, he, how many deaf people didn't hear a multitude yet, yet he had his own daughter. Right. Was deaf. He lost his mind one time. Had to be inst institutionalized for it. Oh. You know that. But he was. God healed him and he came back stronger than ever. And so these people that we have a tendency to put up on pedestals are simply human beings, just like you and me. Right. They're just they're just been chosen by God for for a, a time, for a season, for to do some things. And so uh, we have a treasure. Say I have a treasure. I have a treasure. What what is that treasure that's inside of you? The Holy Ghost. Yes. Do, do you see the Holy Ghost as a treasure? Yes. yes. Do you see the Holy Ghost perhaps as your best friend? Yes. Yep. You can you you can see him like that. You can perceive him like that. You can recognize him like that. In the mornings when I get up, I can't say I do it every single morning, but I try to remember I say good morning, Father, good morning, Lord Jesus, good morning, Holy Spirit. You see, when I do that, I'm making him more real than than and that you know, it's not just some wispy thing out there, but it becomes real. He is an individual. He's the third person of the Godhead. And so I, re I re have respect for him. You know, I, I try to be careful. I don't know about you, but, you know, when I, I, I put my Bible on the table, coffee table, stuff, I try not to put other things on top of it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, the Catholic Church, Buster Darwin, huh? Uh, when, when they would gather together, the Pope, and, and they would have a conference, and they'd be gathered together in a room, and they would all be at a big table, and they'd all sit down, and there'd be one empty chair that, that was there for the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You see, there was some respect there. And sometimes, you know, we, we, we don't respect the Holy Spirit. Uh, my wife likes to say this, uh, we're the temple. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right. When I realize that, that I have a treasure inside of me of unlimited power, 
Do you remember uh, in, in the movie uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yeah. If you had never watched that movie, uh, I give you permission to go watch the movie. Okay. And it's, a, it's about Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. And they're looking for the Ark of the Covenant. And so the, it's during, set during World War II, and it's over in Africa and in Egypt, and they're looking for the, the Ark of the Covenant. And they, the Germans are looking for it because they, in natural, they were looking for anything that had power yeah. that could possibly help them win the war. They were looking in every nook and cranny, and then it really were anything that had any possibility. And... They, in, in the movie, they find the, the Ark of the Covenant because they're looking because it has unlimited power. <coughs> Those that are in possession of it can rule the world. Right. Huh? Well, that temple's on the inside of us. Right. Mm. There is something great. That's as is, is great as the Ark of the Covenant is, I've got something far greater than the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, i got the Holy Ghost and so do you. Okay. Mm. I have this... Until it becomes a treasure to you. Until it becomes a living reality to you. You're never going to be able to be used like God wants to. The reason he put it in you was so it can flow out of you. Right. So he can get glory. Right. You see, we're, we're looking for the glory. We're looking for the glory. We're looking for the glory. It's right there on the inside of you. And God gets glory mm. when it flows out of you and me and it does something to somebody else. Yeah. Mm. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, now go with me. Let's, we're going to take a little side journey here and then we'll come back. Go with me to Luke 11. <coughs> Luke 11 tonight. Jesus, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever you'll ask of God, God will give it to thee. Sounds like a good faith confession, doesn't it? Yeah, it, does. it does. It's just a head confession. Yeah. It, she don't, she's not really banking on this. <laughs> Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. He's talking faith. Martha said to him, I know that he shall rise again. In the resurrection in the last day. See, see some people have, the, the, they, they don't have today faith. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, one of these days in the sweet by and by, I'm going to be healed when I get to heaven. Yeah. I'm not going to need a wheelchair. I'm not going to need to take medication. I'm not going to be old. I'm not going to be in the sweet by and by. Is that true? Yeah. Huh? But I know that he shall rise. I mean, it sounds good. Mm. Sounds great. I know that he shall rise in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am 
the resurrection mm -hmm. and the life. Mm -hmm. yeah. He that believeth in me, uh, though he were dead, uh, yet uh, shall he live. Mm -hmm. And whosoever believeth, liveth and believeth in me, shall never die. Mm -hmm. if, if, if somebody believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, what does that say? They're not dead. Your body is not you. No. You're a three-part man, spirit, soul, and body. The real you is a spirit. Right. Yeah. Your spirit's alive. If you die and you're a child of God, you go directly into heaven. You don't linger around other places. <coughs> you go directly into heaven. Hallelujah. And so they were concerned and they asked him, where did you lay him? Verse 27. And they said, and some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused even that, that that man should not have died? Jesus, there, therefore groaning, again groaning in himself, coming to the grave. It was a cave, a stone laid upon it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he's been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldst believe, thou would do what? What would happen? See the glory. You would see the glory. Anybody want to see the glory? Right. Well, see, sometimes we, we think, well, the glory is, well, this is the glory too. This, 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 this is the glory too. Bringing people to life, getting them born again, getting them healed, getting them delivered, right. raising the dead. This is this is part of the glory. Amen. Part of it. And you've got the spirit of God, you've got the treasure on the inside of you that can bring God glory. Amen. This is time and time again that when Jesus healed somebody, it said that that the, the people glorified God, they magnified God. Sickness does not glorify God. No. Healing, deliverance, that glorifies God. Amen. <coughs> oh, we're about to go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 again. We just threw that up. Still good. <coughs> Verse 7, but we have this treasure. When I begin to realize I have a treasure. I have a treasure. Something, well, a treasure can make you wealthy, can't it? Yeah. Okay? It can, it can make you wealthy. <coughs> Somebody asked Brother Higgins one time, they said, well, what kind of a salary do you get? <laughs> well, they, 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 <coughs> he said, well, I don't, I don't get a salary particularly. Well, uh, you must get the royalty from all the books you sell. He sold millions of books. He said, no, I don't get a penny. Well, all of the cassettes and the albums that you sell, that surely brings you in a lot of money. Well, he says, that I don't get any of it. It just all goes back into the ministry. He said, well, how, how do you live? <coughs> he said, I, I, I make investments. He said, the Holy Ghost shows me what to buy, what stocks to invest in. Well, Brother Beckley, he was, he was always telling us, he said, uh, uh, he said, uh, if, and this, okay, let me say this. If you have any money, and I'm sure all of you do, make your money work for you. Put it, you know, if you put it in the bank, uh, I remember I, I put an X amount of dollars in the bank, and I'm getting like three cents interest. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, they take my money, yeah. they invest it, and they make 20, 30 percent interest, whatever they're investing in. They make, they make bukus of money, lots yeah. of it. But they don't give me very much, it's very little. There was a time, and a, and a, day, and a day long gone, yeah. many years ago, that the banks would give you 10 percent interest. Oh, yeah. I had a man that, that lived next to the church. And he, he said, people think I thought I was crazy. He said, I was just kept buying up all this pasture land. Uh, 
outside of town. I just would buy it up on this side of the road, that side of the road, because he knew one day, he said it was, it was the, the town would eventually begin to grow, and it would spread out, and he started selling it. He said, now, I'm a millionaire. He said, he comes, he says, I'm a millionaire. People think I'm crazy. He says, but I'm a millionaire. I, I put my money in the bank. I get 10%. What's 10% of a million? $100,000. He said, I live on $100,000 a year. Right, yeah. Wow, well, those days are lost and gone forever, yeah. as far as bank interests are concerned. But Brother Baker said, put your money into something. At least let, let, let get some interest. We have a little bit of money that we, we put in the, into a, a special account, and they give us 5.2% interest. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I had it in, we had it in, in, in one bank, and that bank, they, they, the bank we had, HSBC, was sold and bought by RBC Bank. Mm -hmm. And so I had I had, had this certain amount of money in that bank for a long time, and I got pennies. I mean, literally they got pennies. Yeah. And then Brother Baker said, make your money work for you. I thought, well, what would it hurt? And so we, we were able to put it into a particular kind of an account, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and and they gave us like 5.4% uh, interest on it. And the good thing is, we don't have to pay any tax at the end of the year. It's tax free. Right, yeah. hmm. I thought that was good. Yeah. The Holy Ghost on the inside of you can guide you. Amen. He can show you how to prosper. Yeah. Many years ago, uh, maybe 150, 200 years ago, just as they were developing firearms, they used lead for bullets. All right? And all of the, they found that, that if a bullet, the, the, the pellet was round, the bullet would be round. Uh, they don't have like shells like we have today. They had pellets. They had balls. And, but they found that a, a one that was in, in a circle, a ball, a real ball, would fly true and straight. But they couldn't make it that way. And because all of them they, they just there was no way to do it. And this one guy, he's a Christian, and he'd been trying to figure out how can I make round lead balls, you know, for shotguns and for rifles. And one night he had a dream. He was born a good Christian. Had a dream. He saw lead uh, falling down into water, like rain. Uh -huh. And when it hit the water it turned round. Yeah. And he had such an intense dream, he said, I, I'm going to check this out. And when he dropped that molten lead into the water, it, it turned, it, it was always round. Yeah. Always round. Spirit, spiritually perfect. From little pellets to bird shot to rifles, to, you know, balls for rifles. And so he became quite wealthy. But see, God showed him that. Right. Well, did he have a treasure in earth vessels? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen. Okay. This one is shocking. You write this down, Miss Kim. <laughs> you have a genius living on the inside of you. Well, no. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. yes. He's, he is smarter than you. That's right. That's true. He's Hallelujah. smarter than me. Yes. You have a genius that lives on the inside of you. If we could learn to access this this treasure. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't know I had a treasure. <laughs> you do. You do tonight. If you learn how to access that treasure, that treasure can help take you from little to much. Can make you a, a minister or a, a powerful, powerful individual that God can use. Amen. Now, now, I'm going to say something else. Probably going to upset you. I'm going to try to say it right. Um, if your focus on the greater one on the inside of you is prosperity for yourself, you're going to miss some things. Yes, sir. If you're designed prosperity so you can be a blessing to the body of Christ, you're right on target. Amen. Yeah. See, not everybody, they, some people, they, they, this prosperity for myself, for myself, for myself. It's not for you. No, no. The, the anointing of God that you have Kingdom. is not for you. No. It's for other people. Right. 
the treasure that's on the inside of you is not for you, it's for other people. Why? It says that the excellency of the power. There is some Holy Ghost power on the inside of you. There is enough power on the inside of you to empty every hospital in New Brunswick. Amen. True story. There's enough power. The power to, 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 to do an, uh, impossible things. Mm-hmm. That's the excellency of the power. God's power, God's gifts are excellent. Amen. They are perfect. Every good and perfect gift come down from the Father of life. But who's there is no bear with us our shadow of turning? Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm preaching myself out of tonight. Yeah. Wow, two times in a row. Uh, <coughs> say, I have, I have this treasure, this treasure, this treasure. But I'm a crackpot. I'm a crackpot. <laughs> it just means you're not perfect, okay? I'm not saying you're a mental crackpot. If I was here, we'd change up the hill, but you're not here to play. But we have, a, we have treasure, Holy Ghost treasure, that can prosper you. Make you wealthy in faith. Now go with me to uh, James chapter 1. I think it's James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James chapter 2, actually. Verse 2. For if there comes into your assembly a man with a gold ring and a goodly apparel, and there also comes in a poor man in vile raiment, and you have respect to him that is wearing the gay clothing, and says unto him, Oh, here's a good seat, sit here. Here's a good place. Sit right up here in some nice chairs. And you say to the poor, Oh, go stand in the corner back there. And stay out of the way, please. Stand there. Or sit under my footstool. Are you not that yet then partial in yourselves, and you become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brother, verse 5. Hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith? Rich in faith. Are you rich in faith? Well, you can be. Well, if they're rich in faith, why aren't they poor? Well, they're not going to stay poor. No. See, God gives, God gives you things to help 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 you, okay? To help other people. Poor people that have very little are not able to generally, as a general rule, just as a general, are not able to do a lot for the kingdom of God. Okay? You see, there, there's a, there is um, I kind of said delicately. There are people that have a poor mentality. That's right. I'm poor, my folks are poor, my grandparents are poor, and I'm poor too. Yeah. I'm going to see how poor I am. Yeah. But then there's another mentality that just simply says, well, I'm broke. I've been broke. Yeah. I've never been poor. Right. That's right. Even though I had... There were times I had so little, so little, I couldn't afford to buy school clothes for my children. I had to buy them at garage sales and try to get them down to a nickel for what I could get them. I said, well, that sounds like you were pretty poor. No, I'm I'm never poor. I was broke. Broke is temporary. Right. Poor, Jesus said, you are always going to have the poor. Right. Always. Yeah. You are always going to have the poor. Right. Well, if, if your mentality and your thinking, even as a Christian, yeah. if you have that poor thinking, if you can't get a hold of the fact you've got a treasure on the inside of you, well, I can see that for other people, but I just, I don't think I have any treasure on the inside of me. Well, Read the scripture. God said it so. Either God told the truth or he lied. 
No, not know the truth. That's right. And not know the truth. Amen. There is a treasure on the inside of you. That can be a tremendous, tremendous blessing to people everywhere. Pastor Tony, he goes into prisons and he goes into women's shelters and he goes and he and he brings the good news. He's got a treasure for them. Mm -hmm. And there's some of them, some of them, some of the girls will get a hold of it, won't they? And there's some that don't, but some will get a hold of it. And it'll begin to change their lives. Yeah. They, they were in there because of drug, drugs, addiction, and different things. And, and those things just ruin lives. They don't have, they don't in, enrich lives, they ruin lives. That's right. But the, that power that's in Brother Tony to give them the word of God and to pray with them and to minister to them changes everything. He's not poor, he's rich. Yeah. He's one of the richest people I know. Yeah. Rich in faith. Yeah. Are you rich in faith tonight? Mm -hmm. After this morning, we should be. Hallelujah. Now I go with me with down to James chapter James chapter four. James chapter four. Let's look at verse 6. <clears throat> but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he says, God resists the proud. So there's, there's grace and then there's more grace. How many could use more grace? Oh, yeah. Me. I'm, I'm one, I want more grace all the time. But he gives more grace. Wherefore he says, God resists the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Okay? Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh unto God, in other words, draw close to God, and he will draw close to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted, mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself. Now look at this verse here. Verse 11. Verse 11. No, let me see. Did I say verse 11? No, go to verse 10. 10. I'm sorry. My fault. Maria. Humble yourself. In the sight of God. We don't pray and ask God to humble. There was a song we used to sing. Uh, 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 Lord, Lord, uh, make me humble. Oh, yeah. Lord, don't make me humble. We, you have to humble yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you understand the word humble, it means to... Get yourself as low as you can. How, how low can a person go in the natural? On their face. Or you can get down on your face. You know, you can stand up. You can stand up. But to humble yourself means you, get, you just get down before God. Right. You humble yourself. You make yourself, you, you make yourself as little as possible of you. I, I, there, there, Paul said, there is no good thing in me. No. I learned that. There, there is no good thing in me. Mm -hmm. The only good thing in me is the Holy Ghost. Yeah. That's the yeah. good thing that's in you. Amen. Amen. Paul said, there is no good thing in me. But it's the Holy Ghost that's there. Amen. That's the good thing in you. Yeah. He said, now, now humble yourself. Make yourself as small as you can. I tell my wife, I, I'll share the story again. Uh, a number of years ago, we, we had a, a prophet by the name of uh, George Moss that would come to the church. Wonderful man of God. Awesome man of God. And uh, uh, for whatever reason, normally I pick up our guest speakers and bring them to church and everything. But for whatever reason, I couldn't, I wasn't able to do it. So I had to ask this couple in the church if they would pick up George Moss and bring him to the meetings and take him back for me. And uh, uh, I would greatly appreciate it. Now this lady, she always was asking questions. Well, what is, why does the Bible say this? Why does the Bible say that? How come this? How come that? And I mean, even if you gave her a good answer, she, didn't, she just didn't always believe it or accept it or receive it. <coughs> and so I said, you know what? I said, just save your questions for George Moss. When he comes, you're going to have a few minutes every every day with him. 
You're gonna, you can ask your questions to him. Ask him. He's a prophet of God. I said to him, to him, do not talk about yourself. You've got the prophet. Let him talk. Listen to him. Listen to him. And so she picks him up and her husband and they take him for the, for the course of the meetings and several and three days. And afterwards, I asked George. I said, well, George, I said, so-and-so was picked up. I said, yeah, that was picked me up, got me where I was supposed to go. I said, did she ask you any questions? No, she never asked a question. I said, what did she say? She was telling me how spiritual she was. She was telling me about all of her visions and all of her dreams and how God talked to her all the time. She had the man of God, the prophet there, and she was just, she was not being humble. No. I'm, as, I'm as spiritual as you. No. No. And so God can't really use somebody like that. No. I like to listen. Mm. I, I, when Brother Becky and I get together, I, I, I'm mostly in the listening mode. Amen. I'm listening. I want to hear. He was in McAllister, Oklahoma this morning, preaching in Living Word Church. I pastored in, in McAllister, not Living Word, but the, uh, and he was mentioning us. He was talking a little bit about the, that church in Canada. You know, he gave, he gave us $10,000. $10,000. U.S. Woo-hoo. U.S., yeah. yeah. Lord. Well, I thought he was in it for the money. Well, why would he do that? Mm-hmm. Uh, he said this. He said, I had $10,000 in my hand. I had $10,000 of seed. Yes. He said, I planted it. And look for the harvest that's going to come. Amen. Do you see that the money that you have in your hand is seed? Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Or do you see, well, I, I, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to buy that. He says he gives seed to the sower right. and bread to the eater. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. To the free. Humble yourself. Yes. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Get yourself mm-hmm. out of the way. Mm. I tell God, God, I tell all the time, I said, God, unless, unless you breathe on what we're going to do mm-hmm. today. This is going to be boring. Because I wouldn't even want to show up to hear me. But the annoying thing is I'm going to go, and, and it says in all thy ways, acknowledge in Proverbs 3, 5, 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and leave not to your own understanding. All of your ways, acknowledge him. I have to acknowledge him. I tell him, God, it's you. It's not me. It's you. It's the gift that flows. It's the anointing that flows. It's you. It's not me. I'm not smart enough. Mm-hmm. I'm not talented enough. I'm not gifted enough. Amen. I don't have those things. But I, I can be, try to yield as much as I can to let him flow. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. For you are my vessels. And I have put my spirit, my Holy Spirit into you. That my spirit might flow through you. The excellency of the power. For I have put great power inside of you. And until you realize and recognize and acknowledge the greater one on the inside of you. I won't be able to use you. I won't be able to flow through you. Humble yourselves then. Humble yourselves before me, saith the Lord. And I will exalt you in due season. But humble yourself. Make yourself of no reputation. Don't try to impress people with how spiritual, because all you are doing is showing them how religious you are. Don't try to impress everybody. But let my spirit flow through you. And everybody will know you're a crackpot. <laughs> but that's my power and my glory that's flowing through you. And I will get the glory. Amen. I will get the honor. Yes. And you will be a vessel fit Amen. for the master's use. Amen. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And as the translation says, and he shall exalt you. Yes. He will lift you up. Aren't you glad? I, I, I like people that are humble. Mm -hmm. I have been around faith people for, for multitudes of years. And oftentimes I found that I'd rather be around an old right sinner sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they, they just want to get to bragging and talking and, mm -hmm. and exaggerating and lying a little bit. And, and uh, uh, anyway, thank you, Lord. We have a treasure. A treasure. Sometimes it's just good to hear your, you know, your ears hear what I'm saying. You hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Mm -hmm. But your ears are trained to believe what they hear from your own voice. Mm -hmm. So that's why we encourage people to say things. Mm -hmm. We saw this morning. If you had faith, you would say it. Right. That's what it says. If you had the faith as the size of a grain of mustard seed, you would say. Right. So, so your ears need to hear you say things. Right. Because then you'll believe it better. Right. I can say it. You all. Oh, I don't know if I believe all that. But when your mouth says it, yeah. When your mouth says it, mm. that's different. Mm. Yeah. Say, I have, I have. This, treasure, this, this treasure, this holy treasure, this holy treasure. In, me, in me, and it's powerful. And it's powerful. powerful. The, power the power is to be used to for the glory of God. Glory of God. It's not to elevate me. It's to elevate him. It's not to promote me. It's to promote him. It's not to honor me. But it's to honor him. It is to honor him. And as I honor him, the Holy Spirit, that treasure that's on the inside of me, will glorify him. And great and mighty things. What happens? Hallelujah. One last story before Pastor Tony comes. We had a, a lady, the Lord had spoke to me a number of years ago in Oklahoma and said that there was a, a lady who was going to come in, a person was going to come in that uh, he wanted me to pray for their eyes that were going blind. And I said, okay. And then I, that, I was out watering my, my, my garden in the morning because you have to water in the morning because if you, if you water in the afternoon, it's too hot. And uh, the water just evaporates. So anyway, I wore the water early in the morning. But then I had forgot what he had said, and then he reminded me, he said, now I told you, there was somebody who was going to be here. And so I said, well, there's somebody here that, that uh, you're losing your eyesight, and the Lord wants to heal you. And they wheeled a lady, I didn't even know she was there. I didn't see, she was back in the back, and they had her tucked around in a corner, kind of. She's in a wheelchair. And so they wheeled her out, and brought her up, and, and I talked to her for a few minutes, and I, I found out, well, she had a terrible heart condition, and she was bent, she was ridden, she was bound to the wheelchair, had walked in, in some years, and she was going blind. She had uh, two or three other things. And uh, and so I said, well, the Lord said, you're going to heal your eyes. And so uh, we prayed for her eyes, and we prayed for everything else that was going on. And I said, uh, get some ushers, and, and uh, we'll help her up. And so we they helped her up out of the wheelchair, and, uh, and she stood there when they held her. And they kind of, she, she could shuffle her feet just a little bit, but they had to hold her up. And so uh, we weren't going anywhere fast, so they stuck her back in the wheelchair and wheeled her back into the corner. And so the, the, the service went on, and all of a sudden the Lord said to me, there's somebody here that did, does not believe that she was healed. And he showed me exactly who it was. I mean, it's amazing what the Holy Ghost to show you about yeah. people sometimes. You go, Ooh. <laughs> Okay, Lord, I didn't know that. Yeah. And so I just pointed back and I shouted at her. I said, I, I couldn't even see her. I said, rise and walk in Jesus' name. And she leaped out of that wheelchair and took off a run. Just ran all over the place. Wow. After a while, she's pushing me around in the wheelchair. <laughs> I thought the people were going to lose their mind. Wow. Screaming. They've never seen anything like howling, screaming. Later on, I found out that the, the, the praise and worship people had gotten into an argument mm -hmm. over it. 
Well, I was the one that was leading the song service that day when that crippled woman walked. Well, I was the one playing that high guitar, you know, and they were arguing over it. Competition. See, had nothing, see, nothing can flow out of people like that. See, if you can get humble and you don't want to be seen, See, but the problem is most people want to be seen. Mm -hmm. They want to be seen doing great things. Mm -hmm. I want to do great things for God, but I don't want to be seen. Right. Be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. I really don't want, I'm, I'm, I don't want to be seen. But for whatever reason, God chose me to be up here. I didn't choose this. God chose it. And I just want to be a vessel that he can flow through. Pastor Tony, you want to come and help us out a little bit tonight, sir? Mm -hmm. Nice and early here tonight. Pardon me? It's nice and early. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I love the word. Oh, my yeah. God. What a word today. This morning, what a, what a wonderful, wonderful word this morning. I'm not just saying that. Where else can you go and get the word that we received today? What a wonderful, wonderful word tonight. I'm so grateful to God. I'm so grateful to God. In Romans, I know, I think it's Hebrews, says, what is man? The angels speak in there. He said, what is man, God, that you're mindful of him, of them? What is a man? Amen? He said, you make them a little lower than Adam creator. Mm -hmm. The word of God said we are made in the image and the likeness of God. The word of God says that we have been given authority. We have been given power. We have been given dominion. You go out there you try to tell the world, I got that power. I got dominion. I think you're crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm going to tell you this. It's time for signs and wonders. Yes. It's yeah. time for miracles. And the word of God said, he said, the word said, you can do exceedingly abundantly, and he will do it. It's not you doing it. It's he that's doing it. Exceedingly abundantly, beyond what you can even think or ask. Now this morning spoke about faith after pastor. And she said, faith was a gift. It's already given. That we have the faith, the gift of faith. That we say unto this mountain, be thou removed. It will not doubt in your heart, mm -hmm. but believe if those things mm -hmm. shall come to pass, Amen. you shall have them. Right. It's not your faith, it's the faith of God. Right. Amen. Amen. That faith of God said, go into all the world and preach this good news. Cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, heal the blind, heal the deaf, heal. And make whole the maimed. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? The maimed? It means somebody's got a, hasn't got a leg. Speak that leg into existence. Right. He says, he says, I've given you the authority. I've given them power. Being humble doesn't mean not to do nothing. Being humble means to know that it's not you that's doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. Knowing that it's not your ability. Mm -hmm. But it's him. That's that treasure that's within yeah. us. Amen. Mm -hmm. That he does the work. Right. Amen? Knowing that his presence will never leave you. The word of God said we're saved by grace. That was the word saved is not just, just being born again. It includes it. But we're saved by grace. Mm -hmm. Right? Not of ourselves that we can boast. No. For it's a free gift. We've been healed. We've already been delivered. We're set free. We have mm -hmm. dominion. We have power. God says you should decree a thing and it shall establish. His word says his word will never, 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 never return void. That it will always accomplish that which it sets out to do. Oh, oh, we, we in earthly vessels, if we only do, if we only come to the realization, as well as this man spoke about it tonight, to understand who God is and who God is inside of us. And he said, I'll never, 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 ever leave you or forsake you. But you know what will stop moving God in your life? 
It's condemnation. It's guilt. It's shame. Amen? Remember, you're saved by that grace of God, the unmerited, undeserved favor of God. There's nothing that you could ever do to, 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 to pay a price to receive that grace. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. That condemnation, that Satan comes, he comes to try to steal, destroy, he comes to try to stop each and every one of us. But we've been given that grace. No condemnation. Uh, yeah, maybe you kind of fell short in the mark sometimes. Amen? Amen. Don't let combination come in. Right. Don't let guilt and shame come in. I remember going to church and my children were little small little children. My wife and I would have a fight in the car. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you, the devil would try to stir up. Seems like every time I went to church, it seemed like something would happen. I, after that, it happened. I don't even want to go to church. After that, I, I didn't want to move into the things of the kingdom of God that God has already revealed to me the authority, the power, and the dominion that was given. Amen? I didn't want to do it no more. See, that's condemnation. That's guilt. Amen? I am saved, present, past. Past, present, and future. I will not lose my salvation. So if I come short in the heart, I just remind God, I thank you. Thank you, God, that I am born again. Thank you that you never lay me, forsake me. Right. I thank you for your power and dominion, the authority that you've been given me in your name to cast out devils, to lay hands on the sick, on the blind, and the lame. When I minister to people, I tell you, I'm not boasting any possible way of myself, but I know in my heart it's never me. I knew when I command in the name of Jesus the dead to raise, they raise. And it's got nothing to do with me, but it does. I have to humble myself and yield to his presence right, right. and allow him to move through me. Right. When I pray for the sick, I know, I know, I just know, I just know that they'll be healed. Why? Because I don't teach inside me. Amen? Though it's my hands, that when I lay hands in the name of Jesus Christ on that person, it's the whole kingdom of God that comes upon that person. Amen? Oh, it's God good. All the time. You know what? That's good news. God's not a respecter of persons. No. Right. Amen? What he'll do through that man, he'll do through you. Yeah. Yeah. What, he, you know, what, what he'll do through you, he, you know, he'll do through each and every one of us. Right. Oh, God is good. God is good all the time. Amen? Yeah. Pastor, thank you for that word this morning. Thank you for stirring up my faith. Amen? Thank you for stirring up my faith. Stir us up all the time. Pardon me? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm stirred up. <laughs> Amen. God is so good. And God is not a respected person. Let me say this. Unconditionally, God loves each and every one of us. Unconditionally, God loves you. Unconditionally, I tell you, God is not mad at you for anything. For anything. He cannot take away his love because that's who he is. Amen. 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 God is good. Father, we come together in the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. And Lord, we just thank you for the word tonight. Thank you for the word this morning. Thank you, the Lord God, that you are the word, Lord God, the living word. You send your word into our into our into our presence, into our being, into our place, Lord God. Heal of us, Lord God. You deliver us, you set us free. This week, Lord God, as we go forth and we can leave this church. Pray, Lord God, we mull over your word. Lord God, and we just, Lord God, just, just, just chew on that, that meat, Lord God, yeah. that truth, Lord God. God, we thank you. God, we ask you, to, Lord God, to go beyond our own reasonable thinkings, Lord God. Use us, Lord God. Make us usable. Use us, Lord God. Show us the way. Open our, our spiritual eyes, Lord God, that will see it around the spirit, Lord God. Open our spiritual ears to hear your voice that will lead us and guide us and direct us. And God, give us the courage to go forth and decree and declare what has already been given. Make our faces strong against your faces and make our foreheads strong against their foreheads. God, we just give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We thank you, Lord God. We go expect it, Lord God, for such a time as now. 
for signs and wonders and miracles, not just in the church, and wherever we go, Lord God, is by your spirit. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you thanksgiving, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. And everybody says, Amen. 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 Services. Maybe there's some people who would like some prayer tonight. Anybody who would like to have prayer tonight, please come out. Pastor Mike, we are glad to have a little bit of prayer for them. We will pray for them. Amen. 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 Oh, I'll tell you, the power of prayer, the power of prayer is so, so, so mighty important. Deborah, come on up. Nellie, come on up. Would you pray for this woman? Pray for this woman. Father, we just thank you. Jesus, what you did at the cross. We thank you for the stripes you bore. We thank you for the blood that was shed for our healing. So, Father, we just, we receive it. We take it, Lord. This is ours. Healing belongs. It is the children's bread. And it belongs to us. It belongs to Deborah. So, Father, you said, pray you one for another that you might be healed. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So, we lay hands on Deborah. We just call her healed. We call her, we call those things that be not as though they are. She may not feel healed, but Lord, she is healed. And so we call her the healed of the Lord. We say what you say, God. And we just speak to this body. We say, body, you listen to the word of God. You bow your knee to the word of God in Jesus' name. You bow and you obey in the name of Jesus. We speak life into her, every cell of her body. We speak life, the life of God into her right now in Jesus' name. We command, we say, let there be life in every cell and every blood vessel and every artery in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it. Amen. Cecile. Anybody else here tonight that needs prayer, be it for sickness, maybe it's for a family member, maybe because of lack in your family, maybe because there's a bug that's shooting them. Don't be shy. Amen. We're standing in the presence of the Almighty God. We're standing in the presence of the great I am that I am. Is there anything too difficult for him? Amen. It's the time. It's the time. So is anybody else here tonight? Amen. Needs prayer, that wants prayer, so welcome you. Come on, on up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Again, Father, we just thank you for all that you've done. Father, I thank you. As I call each and every person in this room tonight, to watch you by, by, by satellite, we call you blessed in the name of Jesus. We decree the word of the living God in the name of Jesus. You're blessed when you come in. And you're blessed when you go out. 
You're only about the fire above and not what it is. In the name of Jesus, we call your families healed, delivered, set free, blessed with the Lord God, most high God. We command your storehouses in the name of Jesus be filled. We take authority in the name of Jesus Christ over indebtedness. We bind that now in the name of Jesus. And we command it to leave in Jesus' name. We cancel those debts right now in the authority and the power of our Lord God, most high God. And release prosperity into yeah. each and every one of your lives. Come on. You say, Tony, how can you speak these words? Because it said they come to agree what the word of God says. Amen. 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 And if God says it's his word will not return void, it will accomplish that what he yeah. says up to you. So ladies and gentlemen, have a great week. Mm -hmm. Have a great night. Amen. We give him all the praise, all the glory. Yeah. First, and next service. Kathy, Pastor Kathy, of course, on Tuesday night, 7 p.m., prayer service, amen? Wednesday night service at 7 o'clock. Come on, y'all, come on up. Y'all, come on up. Y'all, come on up. Amen. Amen. Then, let me see. Next Friday morning. Set Friday morning, amen? Again with Pastor Kathy. War room, I believe. Lock and load. Hallelujah. And then, of course, Sunday morning. So, have a great week. God bless each and every one of you.